diarrhea for Shigella. So Shigella can cause diarrhea with or without hemolytic uremic syndrome. So whenever you see a case of diarrhea in general, the first step to look at is, are there any alarm symptoms? Alarm symptoms require further stool testing rather than just doing conservative management. So if the diarrhea has been going on for more than seven days, either they're immune compromised in some way, they're elderly, or they are having fever um, and bloody diarrhea, or they're having any other severe disease that they require hospitalization for. So that's the first step to look at. So if they have any of those alarm symptoms, then you need to go ahead and do a stool culture. So the standard stool culture involves getting a multiplex um, C, a PCR. So a multiplex PCR gives you um, where it's going to test for a number of different pathogens all at once. So it's called multiplex PCR testing. So you can do that. You do a culture. You do ova and parasites. You look for WBCs. Um, you can do a clostridium defsal toxin as well. And also uh, you check the stool for fat for any other malabsorption. So typically, um, and always remember when you're doing the um, stool testing, there are what are the natural bacteria that the stool is going to have so you shouldn't confuse that with something that's an infection so natural would be um bacterioids having gram negative rods and gram positive cocci that's going to be nor that's going to be considered normal um, in a stool so once you do that and that uh, that's going to show you whether you actually have the wbc's um whether you actually have blood. So if you see the leukocytes, if you see the blood, then you need to specifically order a sugar toxin as well in the stool. Because if they do not have that um, sugar toxin, then you can go ahead and give them antibiotics along with the conservative management. But if they do have sugar toxin, then the only thing you can do is conservative management. So, um, and then once you, let's say, in a particular case, you end up seeing there is no uh, shiga toxin. So then what antibiotics can you use? Typically for shiga, you can use fluoroquinolones, um, like I said, uh, but in children, you prefer ceftriaxone rather than fluoroquinolones because of their side effects. So that's a quick review on specifically shiga. Okay.